The law of chemical equilibrium. When chemists first observe a phenomenon, they look for the most fundamental laws that govern the process. Before I reveal the law of equilibrium, it's useful, I think, to give an example of one of the experiments that helped derive it. Take the reaction of dinitrogen tetraoxide as it decomposes into nitrogen dioxide. In a reaction chamber, say a stoppered glass jar, we add a quantity of dinitrogen tetraoxide. The gas is mostly colorless initially because we have hardly any product. The rate of the forward reaction is quite large. The reverse reaction is understandably non-existent until some product is formed. As the forward reaction proceeds, the concentration of the reactant decreases, thereby slowing down the rate of reaction. As the concentration of the product increases, the rate of the reverse reaction increases. Don't try to look for a difference between images C and D, they are the same, indicating that the forward reaction rate is now the same as the reverse reaction rate. Macroscopically, this is indicated by no further color change. In other words, the reaction has reached equilibrium. Graphically, the concentration of the dinitrogen tetraoxide decreases over time until the equilibrium is established. Likewise, the nitrogen dioxide increases over time until, again, equilibrium is established. At equilibrium, then, the ratio between the products and the reactants doesn't change. So this, then, is the law of equilibrium. If I were to find the concentration at equilibrium of the product and divide it by the concentration at equilibrium of the reactant, I would get a value we call the equilibrium constant. As long as the temperature remains unchanged, any initial concentration of either reactants or products at the start of the reaction will yield the same equilibrium constant once the reaction reaches equilibrium. From this, we can reveal a generalized expression for any chemical equation. If big A, big B, big C, and big D are the concentrations of reactants and products after a reaction has reached equilibrium, and small a, small b, small c, and small d are the stoichiometric coefficients from the balanced chemical equation, then the equilibrium law expression shows that the equilibrium constant for this reaction under the same conditions of temperature is equal to the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants. Each concentration term is raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient and multiplied by the other terms. The subscripted C of the equilibrium constant refers to the fact that the concentrations of the reactants and products are molar concentrations and are measured in moles per liter. Here's a sample problem. Write the equilibrium expression for the following equation. We're not being asked what the equilibrium constant actually is, just the expression, the fraction, to calculate it if we had numeric values. The first thing we do is arrange the product as a numerator and reactants as a denominator to begin generating our expression. The expression is not quite done yet. To indicate these substances as shown in this expression are concentrations, we place them within square brackets. Finally, any stoichiometric coefficients are added to their respective substance concentrations as powers. And that's it. So to, to calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction, or any other reaction, we need only consider equilibrium concentrations. Initial concentrations are of no consequence. Heterogeneous reactions. The reactions at this point have all involved homogeneous equilibriums, where the phases of all the components of the chemical equation are either all gases or all aqueous. Because the theoretical volume of a gas molecule is zero, more gas particles added to a reaction vessel simply increase that gas particle's concentration without changing the volume of the container. 
Also, up to the point of saturation, an aqueous solution can theoretically have additional solute added to change the concentration without increasing the volume. These concentrations are altered as the system establishes equilibrium. But pure solids or pure liquids have inalterable concentrations. The decomposition of water is expected to have this equilibrium expression. The prime is added to indicate that this is not the equilibrium constant we will use. The concentration of pure water does not change. It's about 55.5 moles per liter under standard conditions. To eliminate this constant from our expression, so that we're left with the equilibrium constant as being the only constant in the expression, the equilibrium constant we end up using incorporates the other constants in the expression. The mathematical aspects of heterogeneous reactions as shown here is actually beyond the scope of this course, but you could be faced with a question containing solids and or liquids. All you do is write the equilibrium expression as normal, simply omitting the solid and liquid components. The equilibrium constant. Some general statements can be made about the magnitude of the equilibrium constant. Since it's derived by dividing the concentrations of the products by the concentrations of the reactants, a large K suggests that the concentrations of the products are greater than the concentrations of the reactants. Likewise, if K is very small, then there are more reactants at equilibrium than products. So when K is greater than 1, products are favored and equilibrium lies to the right. Lies to the right means the right side of the chemical equation, the product side. If the value of K is greater than 10 to the power 10, we can assume only products are found at equilibrium. That is, the reaction is quantitative. When K is less than 1, reactants are favored and equilibrium lies to the left. And to the left means the reactant side of the equation. When K is around about equal to 1, then there are approximately equal concentrations of reactants and products.